Patients with stable ischemic heart disease who have had a prior MI, they demonstrate a range of residual risk for recurrent events. A risk prediction tool might be useful to identify high-risk patients who have the greatest potential for benefit from intensive treatment. So, how about the development of a TIMI risk score for stable ischemic heart disease? That's what we're talking about. And to do that, I'm with Dr. Mark Banaka, who is an MD and MPH and an associate physician in cardiovascular medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, an instructor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, and an investigator at the TIMI study group. You know, there are so many risk scores out there that you kind of roll your eyes. Do we really need another one? That's a great question. We do have a lot of risk scores, and cer we certainly know that busy clinicians don't have a lot of time to uh, look at multiple risk scores in clinic. And, and while the ones that have been developed um, in the setting of acute coronary syndrome have been helpful, we have a new situation in stable ischemic heart disease. We have a population that we now know is at risk from three major trials, and we have available therapies now. We have vorapaxar and we have a 60 milligram dose of ticagrelor, where there's good data that uh, these as long-term therapies reduce ischemic risk, but they also increase bleeding. And so clinicians and guidelines now are calling for tools to help us understand which patients get the greatest benefit and have the least risk. So what group of people did you use to first develop the score, then you validate it in another group? Yeah, so the score was developed in a cohort of a trial called TRA2P TIMI50. That was a broad trial enrolling patients with prior MI, prior stroke and peripheral artery disease and treating them with a PAR1 antagonist called vorapaxar. Mm -hmm. This specific score was really meant to look at risk in patients with prior myocardial infarction. So it was a subgroup of patients with prior MI uh, and that was used in the placebo groups to derive a score that predicted absolute risk. So clinical factors that said this patient may be at higher risk than another patient. It was then validated in the group of patients that received uh, vorapaxar uh, and then there was uh, an analysis that looked at the overall treatment effects, so the benefit within each of these groups and the net benefit. So this is a, like a 10-point score? Yeah, it's like a 10-point score, and I'll say um, uh, Aaron Bahula and David Morrow and our group really led this work, and, and uh, Dr. Bahula presented it earlier today. And they're both busy clinicians, and they know that it's very difficult in a busy clinical practice to uh, put in lots of factors, in, like novel biomarkers, or to log onto a computer. They really wanted to use a practical score. So it's 10 points, things that you would readily know about a patient early in an interview. Do they have diabetes? What is their age? Do they have peripheral artery disease? Do they have renal dysfunction? And so it is a practical score made of uh, uh, 10 components, and it's an integer score. And so the lower the score, the less intense the more higher the score, the more intensive therapy is necessary? Yeah, it's that simple. So that as you add integers, as you add risk factors, there's a clear gradient of ischemic risk over time. And there was long-term follow-up in the trial. Um, and then uh, uh, as you also add those up, because there's a higher absolute risk, there was a greater absolute benefit with vorapaxar. Interestingly, although bleeding did go up with the integer score in the placebo group, the risk of bleeding with vorapaxar did not. So actually in the highest risk groups, there is an overall net benefit that's quite favorable for therapy. Now, is this being published? Yeah, so, so a manuscript has been written and submitted and we're very hopeful that it will be published soon. Dr. Bahula again has led that uh, effort. So if until then, what I would suggest you do is check out CardioSource World News because we will have that information in there and we'll have the, uh, the 10 points for you even. So you might want to try this. This is the Timmy risk score for SIHD with prior MI, correct? With prior MI. And it identifies a strong gradient of increasing risk for recurrent cardiovascular events and it really may be useful as a basis for therapeutic decision making. And so for CardioSource World News and CardioSource World News Interventions, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.